All right, this is a special video. And it's because the F80 M3 is one of my favorite cars of all time. I currently own a 2017 340 and my dream car is an F80 M3. I've never really had a chance to properly drive one of these. Um, I've driven them for part of my training whenever I went to BMW's headquarters. Uh, this is a 444 horsepower in the comp package or about 420 horsepower in the regular uh, configuration of this car. So this one being a non-comp is about is uh, a little bit lower in power. Um, it might actually even be 400. No, it's, I think it's 424 horsepower in the non-comp. So, um, and it's all rear wheel drive, which is also very, very fun whenever you're uh, wanting a car. You see these things getting drifted all the sink, all the freaking time on uh, YouTube. We're not gonna be doing any of that today. We're just gonna be taking it out for a quick spin. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you guys about this car, basically. Um, and more, more specifically, the fact that these are a phenomenal freaking buy right now um, as used car prices start coming back down to earth. Um, so this car, we originally had it listed for 53. It's now below 50, I believe now. It's like closer to 48. And as time goes on and the used car prices will continue to tick down, for about $40,000, this is a phenomenal freaking buy. Uh, this one's sitting here with 43,000 miles on it, um, which is low, but not like crazy low. It's just basically, you know, it's it's a, it's a normal miles for a 2017. My, uh, my 2017 340 has about 41,000, and um, this has the bigger brother to the B58, the, uh, no, it doesn't. It has the S55 in it, which it has proved to be a pretty damn good engine. Um, you can get these with plenty of options on them. Um, and they have a, a, seven, a, a seven speed DCT transmission, which is very responsive. And they're actually pretty reliable. Um, the only complaint that I really have about these vehicles is that the exhaust note isn't um, the best. Sorry, I'm putting my seatbelt on here, driving responsibly and stuff. Oh, and the fact that they're rear wheel drive. So whenever you get these slippy days out here, it's a little bit challenging to maintain some traction if you aren't being careful about it. Um, you've got inside of here, you've got a three stage uh, DCT transmission. We're not warmed up yet, so I'm just gonna drive around in the one setting for a little bit. Um, just while the car gets up to temp. Um, this was the fifth generation M3, I believe. So uh, this car ran from 2013 or 2014 God, 2015 through 2020 was the final year for it. So five-year production run, like all of our other um, M cars. And uh, this is the first year of the LCI um, is 2017. So with the LCI, you got some a little bit different gauge, a little bit different gauge cluster look, um, and a more refreshed iDrive. drive. Um, the 2015 2016 models had the old school kind of iDrive four look. This has iDrive five or iDrive six, which meant you could get wireless Apple CarPlay on iDrive six, and um, just makes the car a little bit more livable. Brakes feel very very good. Um, we've got some ugly roads unfortunately I'm just gonna pull in here let the car continue to warm up and we're gonna talk about it out in front um, the fact that this car's rear-wheel drive makes it very very fun and these things are an absolute freaking weapon on the on track um, with the deep CT transmission you don't have a physical park button you just put the car in a neutral and you lift the e-brakes because it's this is basically a manual transmission being driven by a robot um, you've got three different kind of drive modes to select from here as opposed to a regular um, 340 where you just have you know sport plus and it would go to a couple of different things so you can change the steering you can change the suspension and then you can also change the engine um, this one has the executive package so you get a wide angle front view camera and then you also can get a 360 degree view around the car as well whenever you're going there um, this is Let's see, this is iDrive 5. So you've got, uh, iDrive 5 is not touchscreen. Um, iDrive 6 is touchscreen, and it's just a little bit nicer. Um, the car's actually starting to get warmed up. Yeah, so you can see whenever we turned the car on, the red line was at about 6,000 RPMs. Now it's creeping up towards 8,000. Can safely give you guys some revs now. Hold on. So that's what it sounds like inside of the car. Um, these 
I'm not a huge fan of how the exhaust note is. Um, it's hard to get them to sound perfect, but I would on, I do like how the non-comps, which this one is, sound a little bit better than the comps. They're a little bit less raspy. Um, the N50, the S55 just isn't an incredibly fantastic sounding engine. Um, they just, they're, they're, they're good cars, but they're not like anything crazy. What I do love is how they look underneath the hood. You've got the air to water intercooler and, uh, you know, the carbon strut brace running along the front of the car. And then, uh, this one has a little KNN, but that air box over there is completely normal as well. Uh, this you're rocking the blue, uh, brake calipers and then the five, uh, five point wheels. And then on the interior of this car, you've got the black merino leather interior. This is the extended merino leather option, which means you get uh, leather on the dashboard and then also on the tops of your doors. So it's a little bit higher quality and befits a car of this status, in my opinion. Um, what's cool about an M3 over a non-M car, put this light back on real quick, is that you get um, M1 and M2 buttons. So what the M1 and M2 buttons do is they're basically just hotkeys to switch into different drive settings because you don't have a um, physical like a little bumper switch on the steering wheel there or on the on the center console here. Um, so you can just press M1 once and that'll put you into basically sport mode. And then M2, you press it twice, that puts you into sport plus. So the car is gonna be a little bit more um, slippy, a little bit more fun to drive and um, just an overall better driving experience. These cars are very, very fun on track. I'm gonna take this out of M1 because it's so slippy. I don't need to be driving around in that. But these cars are great on track. Uh, people race these things a lot. They're re-roll drive and just corner absolutely phenomenally. Zero to 60 in the low four seconds. I believe these are around 4.4 um, from the 400 horsepower, 424 horsepower inline six. Uh, engine, which is also very, very nice to have. You've got bigger turbos. This is a twin turbo setup. Um, one little pull. Probably not going to be driving too crazy just because it's so wet outside. Um, make a little left at the light up here. DCC, yeah, the DCT transmission is very, very snappy. It's very percussive, and I really miss it from the uh, last generation. Um, model. Uh, the new ones have an eight speed, uh, more standard style transmission, um, where it's just like a regular automatic instead of a manually driven clutch. This one now, since we're in M mode, you do get some different gauges in here. This is just showing uh, gear one and it shows that your tack, uh, whenever your shift points are, but yeah, I, these are, there's getting to that point where they're a great buy. If you can get them, you know, under 50,000 with, you know, reasonable miles. Uh, I will put a link to this one down in the description below. If you are interested, uh, heated seats and just kind of typical equipment you'd expect for an, an M3. And then another nice thing about these is they don't have a bunch of nannies. Um, you still got your lock unlock button there in the center. There's this thing doesn't have blind spot monitoring. It's just a raw driving experience. It's like one of the last cars you're going to be able to get that has that kind of raw feel. It's really wanting to hang on to revs now. Massive paddle shifters. I, re I've, I really enjoy the steering wheel feel on this, on this car. And um, the fact that the paddles are metal just makes them feel responsive and it feels like they're they're purposeful whenever you're uh, using them to drive the car. Another nice thing about an M3 is the styling looks a little bit different than a regular 340. Um, you've got a uh, power bulge there on the hood and just a um, little bit of a wide kit compared to a regular 3 Series. It just makes the car look very stanced. Um, and then the overall ride is a little bit lower too. This one does have lane keep assist, but it's not like the new cars are where it's trying to drive the car around for you. It lets you, uh, it lets you make mistakes and it just tells you like, Hey, you're, uh, you're driving a little bit too close to either side of the lane. And, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. The F80 M3, fantastic little, uh, little fun ride. They're getting cheap. Um, and you can get this thing and build it out into a really, really proper sports car for not a terrible amount of money. Turn this thing off, give you a view of the front.
If you guys have any questions about the car, uh, please just comment down below. Um, thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you do subscribe and I'll see you next time. See ya.